Welcome to another Empathy Tale. This is Victoria Wolders, and I'm very excited that you've joined us again for another Empathy Tale. Today's tale from the Oaken Eagle Kingdom is We Can Do Better. And these Empathy Tales are set in a fairy tale world called the Oaken Eagle Kingdom. And the purpose of these Empathy Tales is to create compassion one story at a time in the hopes that our listeners would be able to create compassion one story at a time in their lives and how they interact with people. Today's empathy tale is called, We Can Do Better. So before I start, I want you to think about a few things. When was the last time you lied Was it to get that extra Oreo cookie and to tell someone that you didn't really have one when you really did? Or maybe it was at the grocery store. Maybe you got some money back and you got too much money back and you weren't completely honest. Maybe it was something that happened that made you feel like you had to lie. Maybe it had something to do with someone lying to you. So then you had to keep that lie going and you had to lie. It's a pretty hard conversation to have with yourself and with other people when you talk about lying. So when was the last time you lied and how did it impact other people? And when we look in the news, we look at people who lie and we wonder why they lied. Why didn't they tell the truth? Then we have questions about why would they do that when it affected other people, like their family, maybe their wife, their husband, maybe their kids, maybe their co-workers. Why would people lie when it impacts other people. If you knew that a lie was going to hurt one person, would you say it? What happens if you found out that the lie would affect five people? Would it, you still say it? How about 10? How about 15? How about only you? Do you think it makes a difference that a lie would impact more than yourself? Hmm. These are questions that you might want to think about during or after our story today. It is very important to continue to be kind and empathetic with each other. If we are able to truly be in the place where we empathize, which means feeling what another person feels, it becomes a little harder to lie. Maybe a lot harder to lie. Because you start feeling, how would this lie impact other people? Today's empathy tale is called, We Can Do Better. At the end of February, there was a gentleman named Cohen that was put on trial down in the United States. And there was someone who was listening to his story, and his name was Cummings. And if you take time to Google this court case, this trial of Cohen, and you listen to what Cummings said and responded to Cohen, you start realizing that this term, we can do better... (laughs) is straight from Cummings' mouth. I won't go into details about what Cohen did, um, but I would encourage you to take some time, if you'd like to research more, um, to listen to Cohen's uh, testimony and Cummings' response to Cohen. Well, with that, we are going to move on to our story. Are you ready? Are you comfortable? Then I will begin. 
Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, there lived a village of fairies in the magical forest. This magical forest was huge, and magical forest was in the land of the Eastern Eagles. There were several different fairy villages in this area, yet this specific fairy village was on the edge of a lake called the Diamond Lake, and it was known for its beautiful water. There were beautiful glistening trees and beautiful emerald oak trees all around the Diamond Lake. It was known for the happy fairies. It was known also to have fairies that had bright, beautiful pink wings and bright, beautiful blue wings. They had a reputation among all of the magical forest as being a village that was loved and cared for. They respected each other and they cared for each other. Their village came to be known as the Diamond Village. The queen of the Diamond Village was Queen Isabel. She was a lovely fairy. She always wore beautiful, pure white dresses. She had these magnificent, huge, elegant wings that glistened in the sun. The Diamond Village fairies enjoyed living in the village. And they all looked up to her so much and appreciated who she was. The queen was lonely, and she knew she needed to be wed, and she needed to find a king, because this is what the culture of the land expected for a female fairy during this time. She went out into the land, and she went through the magical forest. She fell in love with one of the fairies from another village. She didn't know him very well. His skillful hunting techniques made him a very good archer. He loved being out in the woods. She was also told that he had royal blood in him. She knew that she would marry him. His name was Arrow because of the love of archery he had. They had a magnificent wedding. And they were happy at the beginning. So after they were married, her husband came to her and said, We live by the Diamond Lake, and I would like us to start making arrows with diamonds in them to show everyone in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom how magnificent our diamond arrows are. This will be a sign to all villages that we are a strong village. Every village in the magical forest will know that we have the best diamonds and best arrows in the land. She said, well, this is a nice idea, yet the diamonds are part of our lake. If we take the diamonds out, they will not be replaced. I don't know if this is a wise idea. These diamonds are our treasure. They're embedded into the lake. If we take them out, then there might not be any left over for us to enjoy in our future generations. He replied, No, we have to. We have to show everyone in the magical forest that we are the best village. You have led our people and our village for a long time, yet using the diamonds will prove to all peoples that we are the most skilled and important. After some time, she decided, okay, I will let him do this. So he managed to take many different fairies and they went to the edge of the diamond lake. They started to mine the diamonds. They began to make beautiful diamond arrows. They were the most beautiful in the land. They began to sell the arrows to other villages. Villagers were amazed at the detail and beauty of these gorgeous arrows. 
arrow would often say, These are the most beautiful arrows in all the land. Our queen does not know what she's talking about. She was wrong to even question my actions. Well, after months went by, the queen came to her husband and said, We're running out of diamonds. Arrow was frustrated. He thought to himself that his wife wasn't thinking about the status and power these diamond arrows have given their people. That's okay. I'll just take them from the water troll king, said Arrow. She was stunned and surprised. What do you mean you're going to take them from the water troll king down in the water troll tunnels? Why are you going to take them and steal them from the water troll king? Arrow replied, Under our lake are more diamonds. These diamonds are ours. We've made a lot of money. The villages around us know we have the best diamond arrows. Our villagers have jobs now, and they like to create the arrows. She looked at him. What are you going to do? Are you going to steal them? Arrow looked at her. I'll talk to the water troll king. Perhaps he may be interested in working with me. As he walked out of the castle, he became angry. He was frustrated and he was obsessed over getting more diamonds. He became focused on only the diamonds and it was his plan to make sure he got more. He walked out of the castle He was angry. He was frustrated. He did not understand why Queen Isabel did not agree with him. He decided he was going to the water troll king. So he went to the closest oak tree and managed to go under to the water troll tunnels in order to talk to the water troll king. These caverns were dark and there were some tunnels that had light and other tunnels that did not have light. He walked through the tunnels. As he tried to find the throne room, he happened to fall upon a door that was just slightly open. He walked through it and he found diamonds. He was amazed at the fact that there were so many diamonds in this one single room. Suddenly, he heard some sounds in the cavern. He closed the door and kept on walking. As he walked down the caverns, he finally found the throne room of the water troll king. The water troll king was sitting in a cavern of jewels and gems. The proud arrow looked at him and said, We would like to take some of your diamonds. The water troll king said, No, never. Who are you to come in here and ask for my diamonds? These are our caverns. You're not going to. Arrow looked at him. Well, my wife, Queen Isabel, is very unhappy. And she wants diamonds for her arrows. I am her husband. And I believe that you should give us diamonds. The water troll king was known to have a very fierce temper because he never learned how to control his rage. He raised his voice. No, you're not. Leave now. As the huntsman king left the throne room, he noticed the small room that he happened to go in. He snuck in. 
he decided to take as many diamonds as he could. As he put them in his bag, he tried to be as silent so that no one would hear him as he shoved as many diamonds as he could. He was just about to leave the cavern and he found a passageway up to the top of the land inside the room. He went up and Queen Isabella was there and the beautiful castle. She was in a beautiful white gown. She said, where were you? His response was, I was down with the water troll king. He said we could take as many diamonds as we wanted. Now, We know he was lying because he didn't want to disappoint the queen. He had pride, and this pride led him to lie. Queen Isabel believed him. Over the next several months, the husband and some villagers would go down and pilfer the diamonds in this special room, and they would make most the most beautiful arrows they had ever seen. The queen started to see darkness in her husband. He didn't have the same excitement he used to have. He became angry. He became frustrated and obsessed over the diamonds. And he became focused only on getting more diamonds and creating more arrows. He was able to do it for a while, but one day the water troll king was walking in his caverns. He looked over to the small little tunnel with a small little door that was ajar, and he walked in. He noticed many diamonds were gone. Somebody has taken my diamonds. We have worked very hard for these diamonds, and someone's taken them. So the water troll king went up. He went up to the land, and he thought, I think it's Queen Isabella's husband. It must be the man named Arrow. So he came to the door of the beautiful fairy castle by the Diamond Lake, and he banged on it. The servants opened the door and led him to Queen Isabel's throne room. Now, at the time, her husband wasn't there, and the water troll king could not believe what she had done. You've taken my diamonds. I don't know what you're talking about. My husband said that there's he's made a deal with you and everything's fine. No, he has taken my diamonds and I need to have those diamonds back. I just don't know what to say. I believed my husband, Arrow. The water troll king said, You have... One full day to get me all my diamonds back. And with that, he left the throne room, being very angry. Queen Isabel was very frustrated with her husband's lack of awareness. His lie led to the break in their relationship with the water troll king. Arrow stole the diamonds because of his greed. He hurt many innocent people. A couple hours later, her husband Arrow walked into the throne room, carrying brand new diamond arrows. She looked at the arrows and announced to her husband, They're beautiful. They're the best ones I've ever seen. As she took them from her husband's hand, she said, we can do better than this. We had a village that was honorable. We had a village who was trustworthy. And the water troll king thinks that you've stolen his diamonds. Help me understand, dear husband, what happened. Her husband's head dropped as if there was a shower of water pouring on his head. This is true. I have taken the diamonds and I have all of these arrows because of the stolen diamonds. Queen Elizabeth whispered graciously, 
Well, what are you going to do? He looked at her, confused. I've already sold all of them. I don't know what to do. She repeated herself. What are you going to do? What are we going to do? Arrow, with tears in his eyes, said, I'm so sorry. I should have never done it. She looked around their magnificent castle. The only thing left are the diamonds in the walls of our beautiful castle. We have to pay them back. We have stolen them. So she looked around their beautiful throne room and the legacy of past royalty who gave diamonds to the castle. For every diamond you took, we have to give one back. She decided to stand up and go to the back of her throne. She began to wiggle and take out the different diamonds that were put into her throne. She asked one of the servants to grab her a knife so that she could pry out the diamonds from her throne room. As she was wedging them out of the sides of her throne, a servant came in. What are you doing, Queen Isabel? She looked up and said, Because my husband has chosen to lie, he, and he has chosen to be dishonest, we now have to give out of this beautiful castle. Arrow fell to his knees crying. Queen Isabel was empathetic to Arrow. I too have lied, and I have not remembered that there is impact with the choices I make. I feel your pain. We will sacrifice our castle's beauty to make your relationship right with the Water Troll King. The servants all came in and started taking out the diamonds from the walls of the castle. They put them in a large container and started to haul them down to the water troll king. Arrow chose to be behind them and pick up the diamonds that dropped. He knew he did wrong and every diamond that was picked up was put in a bag. Queen Isabel and Arrow chose to go down to the water troll tunnels. They met the water troll king and said, We are so sorry that there has been pain. Arrow looked at the water troll king and said, I have lied to you. I have stolen from you. Here are diamonds to replace the ones I have taken. We have also added more. Queen Isabel looked at her husband and the water troll king and said, We can do better than this. We know that innocent people have been affected. The water troll king looked at Queen Isabel and Arrow. I will forgive you, yet please remember this, that this has broken our relationship. This has hurt us. It has hurt our trolls and it has hurt your fairies. Time will heal. I am angry for this loss. Yet I know that your courage, Queen Isabel, to tell the truth and make your husband's wrong an opportunity for healing has helped. Thank you for your courage. We hope that in the future that you will never do this again. You will always remember that our relationships and our connections are so important. Queen Isabel hugged the water troll king. Arrow stood behind Queen Isabel with his head down. The only words he could say was, I am so sorry, will you forgive me? 
The water troll king looked at him and said, It is hard to forgive you, but I will forgive you. I want to remind you that our villagers are watching. Our children are watching. We want to build an oak and eagle kingdom that is honoring, caring, and loving for everyone. They embraced each other. That day forward, the huntsman, king, and queen Isabel made a pact that they would care for each other and always remember to be truthful. Queen Isabel looked at her husband. What should we do with the arrows? Arrow replied, It's too late. They're already out, and we don't know what they're going to do with them. Queen Isabel stopped by the Diamond Lake after they had spent time with the water troll king. Queen Isabel looked at her husband with a sad face. We have made our peace with our water troll king, yet the fairies and people of the land still have diamond arrows. I fear that these diamond arrows will one day fly across the sky. I truly believe that we need to continue to be truthful and kind. The arrows have a potential to afflict pain and hurt innocent people like your lie did. You will need to remember that this is a mistake. We hope that the pain that was planted will not turn in to violence. That there will be hope in the future for truth, reconciliation, and care for others. Arrow looked at his wife. I don't know how to fix this. And his wife looked at him and said, I don't know how to fix this either. But I do know that we need to talk to our people and tell them and acknowledge that we can do better than this. We need to overcome shame with empathy. They called a village meeting. They announced from the castle balcony that they were sorry and they had taken the diamonds from the water troll king. Arrow told the people that he should have never lied. They also realized that this was the first step in healing their relationship with the water troll king. Arrow approached the people and said, there was lying and dishonesty. However, we do believe there is healing and we hope that there are no consequences in the future. To everyone out there, we will move forward and do better than this, and we will care. We will show compassion to everyone. In the end, Arrow and Queen Isabel walked away from the balcony. Their hope was that these diamond arrows that were out in the village would be memories of forgiveness. However, there was a concern that these arrows may one day be used for violence. Arrow came to understand that lying hurt innocent people and it broke a relationship. Queen Isabella or Queen Isabel chose to be part of that conversation and help that healing. Queen Isabel and Arrow grew in love for each other, and came to develop a better relationship with the Water Troll King. The end. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this empathy tale. I hope that while you were listening, you thought about the last time you lied and how that impacted people. You can see by the end of the story that lies don't stop. They can continue. And they can affect relationships. They affect connections and they hurt people. Well, 
Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our empathy tale. I hope that this resonates with you. I hope that we can create compassion one story at a time. And I hope as you walk away into your uh, day or maybe your nighttime, that you will take some time to reflect on how you can create compassion one story at a time in your life. Thank you so much. It's Victoria Wolders from My Kids Locker, Empathy Tales. Have a wonderful day.